Well, good morning to our family and our friends and the Potter's House families and for all those that are connected with us this morning. We just want to welcome you to our Sunday online service. It's such a beautiful morning and uh, such a beautiful day just to come in, into God's house and give Him glory and praise and honor. Today I was open up with a word of, uh, of, of exhortation and my scripture is taken from Psalms 44 verses 1 to 8 and it reads, We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what you did in their days, in days long ago. With your hand you drove out the nations and planted our fathers. You crushed the people that made our fathers flourish. It was not by their swords that they won the land, nor did their arm bring them victory. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face, for you loved them. You are my king and my God, who decrees victories for Jacob. Through you, we push back our enemies. Through your name, we trample our foes. I do not trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory. But you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversities to shame. In God, we make our boast all day long. And we will praise your name forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This, this, this scripture was so profound because I'm sure some of you would have heard stories from your parents or your grandparents about what God did in their life in those times when, even when they had very little, how they would grow up so many in their homes, how they would send them to school and how they would provide for them. And the, the amazing thing about this is that when they spoke about this to the younger people, and you know, I, I bear testimony to this because I received also same from my grand. And she would tell us that they never stopped praising God. And they trusted God and they did it with so much of hope, knowing that God would come through for them. And this is what the word is saying, that they speak about the fathers and what the fathers did in the land and, and how, the, how their fathers did not lean on their own strength, but they understood that their victory came because of God. It was their hope, it was their faith, it was their love for God that got them through every situation. I remember there was a time when, when my granny used to send me to the shop and she'd say, Lorenzo, go down and get some, uh, some meat and, 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 and some fish for those that don't eat uh, meat. And when I would come back and would just look to them, the amazing thing that she would do was, she would cook a pot of biryani, she would feed more than 20 people, and I couldn't fathom at that time, but now that uh, you know, I've grown up and understand the word of God, I understand is that they, they did things in faith. They did things knowing that God will come forth for them. It was simple times, humble times, that they lift up a praise to God, even the time when they feel, uh, felt when they were hopeless, but they lift up a praise to God. They never gave up. So this morning, as the word says that, in God we boast all day long, and we will praise your name forever. Let this be our prayer for today. In the good times and the bad that we lift up a praise, understanding that some of us are, are living in, in, in these days of blessings and favor because of those past that have prayed for us, that interceded on, on, on our behalf, that never gave up and that had hope. So we're living on their blessings and, 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 and by their prayers. So today we want to say, Lord, we understand that all that we are is because of you. And all that we do is because you do it for us. So we give you all the glory, all the honor and all the praise. Can we just pray right now? Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, the name that's above every other name. We thank you, Lord, that you're the God that, that never changed, your God. You're the still God that was and is and is to come. You're the God that said, ask and we will receive. You're the God that says that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And today, Father God, as, as we have read your word, oh God, we understand that, that it's you that gives us our victory. It's not about what we can do. We cannot do things in our own strength, oh God. But it's when we tune into you, Father God. When we, Father, engage with you, Lord. It's, it, it's in those moments, oh God, that you take control. It, it, it's in those times, oh God, that we understand that you have your way like never before. So today, Father God, as we stand in all of you, we come this morning, Lord, just surrendering unto you, Father God. Understanding, oh God, who we are and whose we are, Father. We are your children. So this morning, oh God, as we come, Lord, renew our minds, Lord. Cleanse our hearts, oh God. Rekindle that fire that we once had, oh God, to, to worship and to honor you. Re, re, uh, rekindle that relationship that we had with you, Father. 
So right now, Lord, as we engage in praise and worship, we pray, Lord, uh, Father, over every person, over every family that will, uh, that will connect with us, oh God, that they would, Father, just surrender up to you and, and, Father, just be in your presence right now. So we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're going to praise God and we're going to give him all the glory this morning. And wherever you are, wherever you're connecting with us, the whatever the person next to you, come on, you're going to put your dancing shoes on. I want to see you clapping. I want to see you enjoying being in the house of God. And even in your homes right now, wake them all up if they're sleeping and tell them, come on, it's time to praise the Lord. Come on, here we go. My faith, yeah, my faith can do the impossible. My faith can see the invisible. My faith can move the immovable. My faith is healing me. Come on, declare right now. My faith can do the impossible. My faith can see the invisible. My faith, my faith can move the immovable. My faith is healing me. All things are possible. All things are possible, Lord. We believe this morning. All things are possible, Lord. All things are possible, Lord. For this my faith, my faith is healing me. All things are possible. All things are possible, Lord. Come on, right now, yeah. All things are possible, all things. All things are possible, Lord. Cause it's your faith. My faith is healing me. The righteous, the righteous shall live by their faith. Yeah, yeah. The righteous shall live by their faith. The righteous shall live by their faith. Cause it's my faith. My faith is healing me. The righteous shall live. The righteous shall live by their faith. Yeah, yeah. The righteous shall live by their faith. My God. The righteous shall live by their faith. Cause it's my faith. My faith is healing me. Come on, right now. He won't. He won't fail. You gotta believe. Yeah, yeah. He won't fail. Never, never, never. He won't fail. Our God. He won't. He won't fail me. No. Come on, baby. You are. You say he won't. He won't fail. I know. He won't fail. Come on. He won't fail me. Never, never. He won't fail. Our God. He won't fail. Tell that mountain to move right now. Mountains move. Keep us feet. Sickness die. Yeah. I am free. Yeah. I am free. My God. Cause my faith, my faith is healing me. Come on, right? Mountains move. Mountains move. I am free. 
It's your faith that's healing you. The righteous shall live. All things are possible. Amen. And he won't fail us. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. An awesome God that we want to give glory this morning to. Come on. Oh my God. Because you're the God that can do it well. I give. I give you glory. Oh Lord, you brought me through. And now we're ready. And now I'm ready. Whatever you want to do. Oh, we're moving forward. I'm moving forward. To follow after you. And now we're ready, oh God. And now I'm ready. Whatever you want to do. Your presence, oh Lord. Your presence is an open door. Watch you, Lord, you, Lord, like never before. Your presence, oh God, your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, now, Lord, like never, like never before. In every season, you're always there. In every season, your grace has been enough. And I believe you, oh God, and I believe it. The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Oh, the cross, the cross before me. My own more things above. And in you, Jesus, we know. And in you, the best, the best is yet to come. Oh, the presence of Lord, your presence is an open door. Watch you, Lord, yeah, like never before. Your presence, oh God, your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, oh, like never before. Your presence, oh God, your presence, come on, is an open door. Watch you, Lord, yeah, like never before. Your presence, oh God, your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never, God, like never before. Come on, we're going to declare this morning that right now that your breakthrough is coming. Whatever you trust in God for. It's not too big for you. Come on, we serve a big God that can do signs, wonders, and miracles. We're not going to give up right now. Oh, come on. You're going to sing with me right now. I know, I know. Breakthrough is God by faith. You're going to see. I see a miracle. My God, He made you a promise that He won't stop now.
Now I want to thank the pastors and leadership of Potter's House for allowing me this opportunity to minister the word of God to you and to bring the word of God to you. It is really an honor and a privilege. Now you know we've just come out of Christmas and Christmas Day we celebrated the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This was the perfect gift of God to mankind. Jesus who came on the earth to bring love, joy, hope, peace and the promise of eternal life. But the mandate on Jesus' life was not to remain on the earth. That was not his purpose, to live here in the form of a man forever. He had a mandate to come to preach the word, to heal the sick, to deliver those that were possessed, to raise the dead, and then he sacrificed his life for us when he went to that cross. He rose on the third day and then he ascended to heaven, leaving us with a hope of eternal life. Amen. What a marvelous and beautiful and perfect gift. Hallelujah. We are so grateful to God when we stand this morning and we think about the gift of Jesus. We are so grateful to God that he sent Jesus. But you know what? I'm also grateful to God because he didn't leave us alone. Yeah. When Jesus ascended into heaven, in John 14, 26, he said, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So when Jesus ascended into heaven, God didn't leave us alone. He gave us the Holy Spirit. He sent the Holy Spirit to empower us, to give us spiritual gifts, so that although the perfect gift of Jesus is not walking on the earth today, the plan of God was to instill and empower us with gifts so that we can be his hands and feet here on the earth. You know, when you look around the world today, there's so much for us to do. God really needs us. He needs us to rise up. He needs us to exercise our gifts. He needs us to be empowered by the Holy Spirit because we can't do this on our own. We can't go into all the world, preach the gospel, deliver those that are bound, heal the sick on our own. Yeah. We need the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And that is why he has equipped us with the power of our gifts so that we can do the work here on the earth to advance the kingdom of God. God. That's our purpose. Many of us wonder, and you may be thinking, what's my gift? What gift do I possess? How, how will I know what's my gift? We have to look no further than the Word. Yeah. The Word of God speaks to us and gives us so many examples of what gifts we are blessed with so that we can be a blessing to others. If you look at, and I've chosen just two scriptures this morning, that speak of the gifts and the gracings that has been given to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. So if you have your Bibles, let's turn to Romans 12 from verses 6 to 8. Romans 12 verse 6 to 8. And it says, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. And I like the way the scripture starts because it says we have different gifts. It doesn't say we may have or you may have been given. It says we have it. Amen. We have it. That's an assurance that we have these gifts. Whether your gift is prophesying or serving or teaching or encouraging or giving or to be a leader or one that will show mercy, do it with all your heart. The second scripture that I would like you to turn to is 1 Corinthians 
Corinthians 12 from verses 7 to 11. And this is the way you find out what gifts you possess. Through the word of God. It says now to each one. Now to each one. The manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the spirit a message of wisdom. To another a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit. To another by the same spirit faith. To another gifts of healing by that same spirit. To another miraculous powers. To another prophecy. To another distinguishing between spirits. To another speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still to another interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he distributes them to each one just as he determines. There's a second assurance we have that each one of us has a gift or gifts. It says each one he looks at and he determines what gift you shall have. So I want to assure you this morning that you have been blessed with a gift. Whether it is a gift of wisdom, whether it is a gift of knowledge, whether you have the gift of laying hands on people and they will be healed, whether you have the gifts of speaking in tongues and prophesying, whether you have a gift of discernment. And I know some of you are sitting there in your homes this morning and you're listening to my voice and you can, it actually resonates with your spirit, the gift you have. Because you know and you can say, yes, I have the gift of speaking in tongues. I have the gift of prophesying. I know I have it. I have the gift of when I pray for someone, they will be healed. I know that. And that is the gift that the Holy Spirit says he distributes to each one of them just as he determines. So as children of God, we have been blessed with gifts. We need to identify what our gift is. And then not only identify what our gift is, but use it so that the purpose of God can be established here on the earth. There are a few points you need to consider when you set in your heart not to let your gift lie dormant. Now, when I say don't let your gift lie dormant, it means don't let it just lie and not be used. You know, it's like you're putting water into a bucket and you're just leaving the water to lie there. The water becomes stale. Eventually, over days, it becomes moldy. Then it becomes smelly. Then it attracts mosquitoes and insects. Don't let your gift lie dormant. Your gift must be active and evident in your life so that it can be a blessing to others. Firstly, you need to identify the gift. You need to identify your gift by praying and asking God to reveal it to you. Then you need to read the word and search the word of God to find out what your gift is. You also need to search God during your time of praise and worship. And surely he will reveal it to you. I know that God has blessed each one of you with a gift. Amen. Each one of you listening to me today. God has blessed you with a gift. Don't say, I don't have any gift. I don't have anything that's of value that I can bless somebody else. Everything that you said, Sister Annie, I don't think I have it. You do. You do because God has assured us in his word that every one of you has a gift. You just need to search his heart and to know what your gift is so that you can be a blessing here on the earth. Secondly, you need to discover, once you discover what your gift is, you need to get excited about your gift. You know, when you receive a gift, and I know we just passed Christmas Day, so when you receive a gift, you get very excited, right? No matter, sometimes uh, it may be what you were looking for, but you're excited. And then after a while, especially kids, I've noticed this, they get excited and they play with it and play with it for a few hours, and then after a while, they toss it aside, they lose interest, and they forget about it. Now, aren't we like this sometimes with our spiritual gifts? When we receive it, and we know what it is, 
we are so excited and we so overjoyed and we said, oh God, you've given me the gift of speaking in tongues. You've given me the gift of wisdom. You've given me the gift of discernment. And we get so excited and we use our gift, but only for a while. And then after that, we toss it aside and we lose interest. We forget about it. But my encouragement this morning to you is remain focused. Don't lose interest. And you'll see how God will work out that gift in your life. And you will see it manifesting every day. As you come into contact with different people, you will see it. And it will bring more and more joy and excitement into your life and into the lives of people around you. Now the next point is don't keep your gift to yourself. Now I want to share with you a personal story. And I don't know why I was like this. My, my parents and my sisters, uh, my mom and my sisters, they can attest to this. Uh, when I was a little girl and I got a gift, whether it was a toy, uh, whether it was clothing, whether it was jewelry, uh, whatever it was, I kept my gift to myself. I had this little rule, and everybody in my house knew it, that if I got something as a gift, I must play with it at least seven or eight times. I must use that new dress at least seven or eight times before I can lend it to anyone else or before I can allow anyone to touch it. I, I, you know, I, Lord forgive me. I don't know why I was like that, but I'm not like that anymore. But that was my story. I wanted to keep my gift to myself. And you know what? If it was a toy that you needed more people to play with, I never really enjoyed the benefit of it until I began to share it. Your gift is not for you only. It's for others to benefit from it. It's for the edification, for the building, for the encouraging of the body of Christ. Don't be selfish with your gift. Share your gift with others. Let others see the gift that God has blessed you with and how that gift is being used to be a blessing to others. The next thing is don't reject your gift. The fourth point. In the natural, we don't always get the gifts we desire. Isn't that true? Sometimes we get something we don't really ask for. We don't really need it. Uh, we don't want to make use of it. And sometimes in the spiritual, we feel the same way. When we get a gift, we don't embrace our gift. We reject it. But just know that your gift was tailor-made for you and you alone. When we read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says the Spirit distributes each one just as he determines, which means that it's tailor-made for you and you alone. The next point is your gift is developed and matured by reason of use. The more you use your gift, the more prominent it becomes and the effectiveness of your gift grows and reaches to places you never thought was possible. So develop your gift. Use it. Let it become more prominent. Let it become more effective. Let your gift grow. Let it reach places that you never thought it would go. Don't be afraid to exercise your gift. You know, I want to share with you, I have the gift of speaking in tongues. And I use my gift. I exercise my gift. Sometimes it doesn't have to be in a church setting. But it can be at home while I'm cooking and, or while I'm doing the dishes or I'm washing up or I'm even at work sitting in front of my computer. I exercise my gift because I know that as I exercise my gift and I develop my gift, it will become more and more effective here on the earth. The sixth point is that just because you are gifted and favored by God, it does not mean that your life will be absent from challenges, trials, and tests. Can't we all attest to that? Yes. Like Mary in Luke 1, the angel, when it came to her, the first thing the angel said 
sure you are highly favored of God. But while she was carrying the gift, she had to endure much ridicule. She had to go through a lot, but she carried the gift. Even though the tough times will come and circumstances will prevent you from using your gift or will seem like it's, it's becoming harder for me to exercise my gift. That's the time your gift needs to rise up. That's the time your gift needs to come to the fore. If you have a gift of singing in the tough times, that's the time you need to praise and worship Amen. God. Amen. If you have a gift of intercession, that's the time you need to, when you're going through a challenge and a tough time, that's the time you need to get on your knees and intercede for yourself, intercede for others, stand in the gap, even though you may be going through some challenging time, but you stand in the gap for others. Engage God. If you have the gift of speaking in tongues, speak in tongues. Get through your days speaking a heavenly language that will begin to dispel the forces of evil that is working against you. I'm here to encourage you today. Use your gift even in the times of trials and testing. Use your gift. If your gift is to minister the word, stand where you are, even though you may be feeling like you are bound and you may be feeling that you are uh, uh, weak, stand where you are and minister the word of God. You may think no one is listening, but the word is going out into the atmosphere. The seventh point is be satisfied with your gifts. Don't desire somebody else's gift. Now, I don't want to make mention of any kids because I know a lot of kids and I've watched a lot of them open their gifts on Christmas morning. And I watched the joy and the excitement and then suddenly it turned into jealousy when they saw what their siblings got. And you know, it's funny to watch at that time because you see them getting something and they're so excited and then they look and they see what their brother and their sister got and then the face just drops. Because now they're desiring what somebody else received as a gift. But sometimes it happens to us spiritually as well. When we get a gift, we think that that gift is not good enough. And we see somebody else's gift and we say, oh, that's a better gift. That's a more recognized gift. Uh, that's a gift that will make more impact. And, and then we somehow, in our hearts, we desire their gift. But God is saying to us this morning, don't desire someone else's gift. Because the gift I have given is for you. Amen. You know, the Bible tells us that if our, if our earthly father knows how to give good gifts, how much more our heavenly father Amen. knows how to give us good gifts? Because he knows us better than anybody else. So the gift that he gives us will be better than anything anyone else can give us. Our earthly fathers give us gifts because they base it on our character, our what we like, what we don't like, how uh, our career path is going, they may give us a gift towards that. But our Heavenly Father, He gives us a gift because He knows us inside out. He knows everything about us. He knows who we are. He knows how we work. He knows how we operate. He knows how we think. He knows how we love. He knows how we... He knows everything about us. So imagine how much of immense love and thought and care goes into it when He gives you a gift. Yeah. Amen. So don't desire somebody else's gift. You know, the other thing, a point that I want to mention, is that you can have more than one gift. You should actually desire more than one gift. Because then you can be a force that will be reckoned within the kingdom. The more gifts you have, the more powerful you become in the spiritual realm. And, you know, um, this time around, when you talk about wanting more gifts, sometimes when, when the world looks at us and, and the world sees and says, you know, if you want more gifts and you're considered as greedy or you're considered as somebody that, you know, you're not satisfied with just one gift. But we must have a desire to say, Lord, bless us with gifts. With the S. Bless us with gifts. So that we can be a force on the earth. We can be a, a people that, that will be able to do great exploits for you. Imagine a team of, of soccer players, and I, you know, I don't profess to know much about soccer. Uh, I 
watch once in a while, but I know that if you have a player that is gifted with many talents, he's such an asset to the team. He can be a very good goalkeeper, but he can also be an excellent striker. And you know, this person can be used as offense and defense. They can be used too, on two sides of, of the game. And also this person can be used when one person is, when the goalkeepers are not available or is hurt, they can put this person in because this person has that gift and talent to be able to take on more than one task. Now imagine us in the kingdom. When we have more than one gift, how much more God can use us? We like multi-tools in his hands. He can use us here and he can use us there. When he needs us, he can call upon us and then we can be ever ready to take on that which he's called us to do. So purpose in your heart today. As you listen to me, don't let your gift lie dormant. Don't let it just lie and then be forgotten and lost. But trust and know that the gift assigned to your life has been created for you. The gifts assigned to your life has been created for you so that you can be an ambassador, a champion for God here on the earth. You know, today is our last Sunday of 2020. We draw it closer to the end of this year. But when we enter the new year, use these last few days of the year to purpose in your heart that God will renew in you passion and excitement and a desire for you to use your gift. He will give you opportunities in the new year for your gift to be exercised and manifested and to be used to be a blessing to others so that whoever you come into contact with, they will be a recipient of the grace of God. You see, because your gift the purpose of your gift is so that you can impart the presence, the grace, the love of God into the life of another person. When they leave you, they must walk away knowing that they have felt the hand of God touch their lives because you have not been selfish with your gift. So I pray that each one of you whether your gift is prophesy, whether your gift is to serve, whether your gift is to teach, encourage others, whether your gift is giving. I know people that have multiple gifts. They, they, can, uh, they have a gift of worship, praise and worship, but they also have such a giving heart. And when I look at them and I think to myself, I say, you know what, their gifts were tailor-made for them. So use your gift, no matter what it may be. Use it to be a blessing to somebody else. Use it to advance the kingdom of God. God needs us here on the earth more than ever. He needs his sons and daughters to arise and take their rightful place on the earth. But we need the power of the Holy Spirit through the manifestation of gifts to be able to do that. Do that. So let us bow down for a word of prayer. Father, we come before you mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us with gifts. Gifts, Lord, that will be a blessing to others. Gifts that will edify your, your body. Gifts, Lord Jesus, that will build the kingdom here on the earth. Gifts that will encourage others. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would help us as your people. Lord, to know that we have gifts. Your word is so clear that we have gifts and these gifts are in us, Lord, so that we can be a blessing to the nations of the world. So we thank you, God, for your, this time in your presence. We thank you for your word, for your word brings light and life to us. We pray, Lord, for every family that is listening today. I pray for your hand of protection, your hand of healing, yes. your hand of grace, yes. your hand of mercy, your hand of deliverance, to be upon each and every family, God. Bless them. Touch them and anoint them. And you, Lord, be God and King over their lives. So we praise you and we ask all these mercies. 
in the wonderful and precious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. A good day to you. Have a blessed Sunday. God bless you.